Hi, in this video, let me show you another finite state machine. Uh, we're going to build a line tracking robot, and this is going to be a more finite state machine. Uh, let's begin with the inputs and outputs. Um, this line tracking robot has two motors, uh, one on the left and one on the right, uh, and it has two sensors to tell whether we're on the line. The goal of this uh, system is to make an autonomous robot which drives along this track. Okay, so I'm going to track this line. Uh, the two motors, uh, if I drive both motors, both the left and the right motor, uh, they will go straight. If I drive, uh, <coughs> turn just the right motor here and not the left, it'll turn left. And another way around, if I drive just the left motor and not the right motor, it'll turn right. Okay, so those are, the, those are my outputs to, uh, to the two motors. Uh, let's look at the inputs. The inputs are infrared uh, sensors. And these infrared sensors will tell me yes or no whether or not the two sensors you see positioned here in the front are, are on the line or not on the line. So in this configuration here, if both sensors show one, that means that both sensors are on the line, which means the robot is down the middle of the track. Uh, however, if I'm off to the left, you see that the left sensor will go dark and the output, will, the sensor uh, signal will be zero. Uh, but the, I'm off just a little bit to the left, so the right sensor is still on the line. So the right shows a one, the left shows a zero, and that means the robot is off to the left. Uh, if the uh, sensors are reversed, in other words, if the right sensor is dark and the left sensor sees the line, I'm going to have a zero one. So again, the sensors allow me to see the situation of where the robot is. I have one more case that I don't know quite how to handle yet, and that is if I'm lost, and that is both sensors go dark. I'm either off to the left or the right. I don't know. And this is where the finite state machine will help us. Uh, if you wanted to build it, uh, here are two motor drivers. Uh, the output of PF2 is going to drive this transistor, uh, driving this right motor, and the output of PF1 is going to drive this transistor or drive the left motor. Again, both motors on go straight, one zero turns left, and zero one will turn right. And here's the sensor interface. Uh, this is a, a, a QRB1134, an infrared sensor with a focal length of about five millimeters. Uh, this infrared diode emits infrared light. Uh, that light will either reflect or not reflect off the line. And then that light, reflected light, will either turn on or turn off this transistor. Uh, this is a thresholding circuit such that this signal here on PF4 uh, will tell me whether or not there's a line. One means I see a line. A logic zero means I don't see a line. And then I have a second one for the other side. Okay. Uh, let's begin with the strategy. Uh, here I have my robot on the line. Both sensors, both sensors show line. And then uh, the color means here that this uh, dark blue means these motors are active. And so these, both the left and right motors are spinning. Okay, so as it spins forward, uh, we see that the robot goes in a straight line. Uh, but then uh, the robot goes in a straight line, but the line moved. And now we have something that went wrong. The left sensor went dark, went zero. Uh, that means I'm off to the left. So what am I going to do? My strategy is if I'm off to the left, I want to turn right. And we saw how to turn right is to slow down the right wheel. So if I slow down the right wheel and drive the left wheel, it will turn uh, toward back towards the line. So we see that the robot will turn. Uh, the, wheel, the right wheel isn't stopped. It's just running at a slower rate. And it turns and moves until it's back on the line. Again, both sensors see the line, both wheels are active, and so now it's going to move forward again uh, until the line goes away. The right sensor went dark, left sensor's on, uh, so what am I going to do? I'm going to slow down the left wheel, which will cause it to rotate to turn left. Uh, this line turned a little faster, so it took a couple of times uh, for it to turn and move until it sees. So now that once both sensors are activated again, I'm going to go back to the steady state, which is to drive both wheels in a, so the robot goes straight. That's my strategy. If I'm off to the left, I'm going to turn right. And if I'm off to the right, I'm going to turn left. And if I'm on the line, I'm going to go straight. Okay. So now what we're going to do is capture that 
strategy into the state graph. Okay, so we got to define some states. Okay, so states, as you remember, are what do we know? What do we believe to be true? Okay? So if I'm on the line, if I'm in the center of the road, uh, <clears throat> then what I'm going to do is go straight, and that's what this says. If I'm in the center, go straight. Uh, if I'm off to the left, okay, I'm off to the left, then I want to turn right. And if I'm off to the right, I'm going to turn left. So this is the essence of how I'm going to use my outputs to build this state graph. Okay, I'm going to use the outputs, uh, which are a function of the state. Okay, so if I'm off to the left, I'm going to turn right. And if I'm off to the right, I'm going to turn left. Now, I could have added a law state. Um, uh, but we'll see what happens if I get lost when I build the machine. All right, so now let's build the state transition table. The state transition table is built in this way. Down this axis are the state names. Okay? It's a more machine, so every state has a unique output, or every state has an output. It doesn't have to be unique, but every state has an output. So that's what I put here. Now in this state transition table, I need a column for every possible input. And then what I place in the table is what do I do if I'm in the center state and if the input is a 1-1, one, one, the question now becomes what to do next. And that's what I place in this state. So let's do a few. Okay, If I'm in the center state and I see a 1-1, one, one, I'm still on the line, I'm going to remain in the center state. Uh, I've also started to build the graph down here. And I've also build, uh, started to build the data structure here just to show you this one-to-one -one mapping. This entry in the table matches this arrow in the graph, which mas matches this entry in the uh, software. Okay. Um, if I'm off to the left and now I see the line, that means I'm on the line, so I'll go to the center spot. Okay. And if I'm off to the right and now I see the line, both beautiful lines, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to this center state. So in this state graph, whenever I see the line, I'm going to see both lines. I'm going to be next into the center state. That was an easy one. Let's do a harder one. What do I do if I'm off to the left? Okay? In other words, the input is a 0, 1. I'm off to the left. If I'm in the center state and I just went off to the left, I'm going to go to the left state. Okay? Uh, the other thing I'm going to do, if I'm already in the left state, I know I'm in the left, and I'm still in the left, what I'm going to do is actually oscillate here between left and center. So again, if I'm off to the left, I'm going to turn right. This is where the finite state machine uh, really helps us out. And that is, what if I go off the track? Okay? Now, what's important to know about a finite state machine is we know not only what the input is now, but we know where it was previously. So what this is telling me is I used to see the left. I used to be just a little bit off to the left. And now I'm way off to the left. You see that? I used to be just a little bit off, and now I'm way off. And if so, I'm going to go into stay in the left state. So in this mode, I'll stop one motor, drive just the other motor, and make a hard turn uh, back to the right. OK. Again, the whole thing is symmetric. Uh, what happened on the left happens on the right. Uh, so and this is where um, I'm used to be on the line, and now I missed the right sensor. The right sensor just went dark, so I'm just a little bit off to the right, so I'll go to the right state. And then what will happen is this will oscillate between these two states uh, while I'm a little bit off to the right, which will, again, make a uh, toggling on the left motor and make a, sh make a soft left turn uh, back to the line. So off to the right. I'm going to turn left. Okay? So the red entry in the table matches this arrow, matches that spot in the software. Uh, this purple entry matches this arrow and that thing. So again, all three are connected. Just like going way off to the left, I could go way off to the right. Uh, and you see now uh, this, the sensor shows 0, 0, but I knew previously I used to be off to the right. And so this arrow here will keep me into the right. So I used to be just a little bit off to the right. Now I'm way off to the right. And so I'm going to do a complete stop on the left motor, uh, making a sharp left turn uh, to go back on. 
I got a couple of and more entries that don't make any sense, but I got to put something in there. Uh, this one is weird. Uh, <clears throat> this is telling me I used to be a little bit off to the left, and somehow I jumped to be a little bit off to the right. Uh, that can't happen unless your robot skips, uh, but I got to put something in there. Uh, similarly, this one says I used to be off to the right, and now I'm off to the left. Uh, I don't know how it happened, but I'm going to put something in here. Uh, this one's a little more plausible. This one happens if the robot is actually running completely perpendicular to the track, where it goes from both sensors totally on to both sensors totally off. And so in this mode, I'm just going to guess. Well, I'm just going to pick one, and hopefully it was off to the right. Uh, let's put it all together. Here's the entire uh, state graph. Again, one-to-one uh, uh, -one mapping between the table, the graph, and the data structure. That means no more, no less. Uh, let's talk about time. Uh, motors typically run in about a tenth of a second, so we're going to run our finite state machine about ten times faster than that, so each of my states is going to have a delay of uh, ten milliseconds. All right, so now let's do the software. Uh, there's my structure from before. There's my state uh, and index. Uh, this index is going to be um, uh, zero for center, um, one and two for the other two states. Okay. Um, I'm going to add some debugging variables, uh, input and output. Input's obviously going to be the input. Output's going to be the output. I'll initialize my uh, GPIO ports, my PLL and Cystic, and then set the uh, state to assume I'm in the center. It's a more machine, so what do I do first? I do the output. Of course, this is not the output. This is just reading the output out of the variable and storing it into this debugging variable. The actual output occurs when I do the output to the motor, when I write to port F. Okay. And so this variable here is going to be either a 3, a 2, or a 1, depending upon whether I'm in the center of the left or right state. Uh, as I mentioned before, each uh, state will wait 10 milliseconds. Uh, so this 1 is captured out of the structure, and then I'll wait 10 milliseconds uh, to slow down this, this driver. Then I produce my input, which is going to read from the, the two sensors. Uh, and then my it's a more machine, so the next state is a function of the current state and the input. So I'm going to go to the next state, and then it's, I'll repeat this over and over again. Let's show you, uh, let's show you this in the software. Uh, here I have the, uh, the solution uh, to that. And so let's debug it. I'm running it in the simulator, uh, so my port F uh, here's my sensors. Uh, these two bits are my output. I got the logic analyzer up, and so we hit the go button. And again, this state here tells me I'm in the center state, and my two inputs are high, my two outputs are high, the motor's going straight. If one of the sensors goes on, we see that the uh, when I turn right, uh, when, I, when, I, when I'm off to the left, it will, it will turn right by toggling uh, the other motor. If I get back on the line, I'm going straight again. If um, uh, the other sensor is on, I'll toggle the other motor. So again, I have my inputs and my outputs, and I can see them here in the debugger. So in summary, what do we have? Uh, this is a more finite state machine. Uh, we produce an output, which is a function of the state. We look at our inputs, uh, and those inputs tell us what the next state will be. And the idea is to develop a strategy and build that strategy into what should the outputs be uh, and what should the next states be. All right, you try it.